Hello everyone and welcome to another episode. Today we're discussing the Lychee Slicer Update 6.0.2. So for those of you that were part of the beta program on Discord and you took advantage of some of those features before they were live, um, a lot of those new features are now going to be live in the new version, as well as some patches and fixes um, and some notable things like, you know, they always add printers with every single version. And we'll go over all of that with you and I'm going to demonstrate some of the pro and premium features of what the update has done, especially for grid supports. Pretty cool. Um, definitely want to show you the, the way that can be useful for you. Even if you have old stuff that you've already supported, um, you can go back and you can modify it and you can change that to the grid uh, support style if you want. Anyway, we'll go over all the features first and then I'll go into some show and tell. And uh, we'll go one thing at a time there. So first off, this is 6.0.2. That is the version we're talking about. And this is the actual public release. This is not a beta right now. This is actual public. Um, first off, you have a couple pro features that have been implemented for resin. You have a pro resin feature grid supports, which is uh, can be turned on through the structure menu in the prepare tab. Uh, it allows you to create better parenting, auto parenting, better styles of bracings. Um, and um, really cool for those of you that are using auto supports, this is a great improvement over the traditional auto support function. It, it allows for some redundancy in the support protection. And so I think it actually will actually allow for a lot better um, support uh, and auto support all, overall. Uh, another pro resin feature, the bracing editor, uh, which is an advanced editor to create your own bracing presets. Which I haven't really explored too much myself. Uh, but there's a lot more to that, and I'll show you all how to get into that uh, as we plug into the rest of the episode. Uh, there has been some pro filament uh, items added, surface ironing, uh, Boolean tool, and angle seam placement, which is not a pro feature. It's just a feature in general that's been added for filament. Uh, some pro improvements and optimizations. Inline support can now be used with mirror mode. Painting supports can also be used with mirror mode. Uh, mirror supports are now improved since you can choose this feature in the center of the scene world or the center of the orientation or the object local uh, and i can demonstrate how that kind of works too i don't know if i have any objects preloaded in my scene right now that'll fit that kind of theory but essentially what it is is it allows you to kind of focus from different angles so when you change the orient orientation of an object sometimes the x y and z will get kind of crossed and so i think this this is correcting that um, pro resin addition of the grid supports of the batch tool and addition to the generate batch report checkbox in the batch tool if anyone's using the batch uh, commands. Filament, we've also improved our FDM supports, adding new support shape, which is a cylinder, better zone selection when using supported slice. A raft is now added under the supports. This is for filament, that last one. There's also a number of bug fixes uh, that are noted. Lots of bug fixes improvements uh, to the grid supports, which is also due to the feedback during the beta. Thanks, everyone who participated in that. It's fantastic. I saw a lot of feedback coming into the Discord on that one. Multiple fixes when using the interface when it's crashing. Files that were not found using LYT or LYS. Hollow blockers don't delete inside supports anymore. Scaling uh, a hollowed object now updates its hollowing. And so long as you don't puncture the holes out. If you don't cut the holes out, this will work. As soon as you cut those holes out, Lychee treats it differently. So keep that in mind. If you're going to scale the object, do that before you punch any you know caps or holes or anything like that. Time estimations were false for some printers. This has now been corrected. And many bugs and crashing affecting the batch tool have also been corrected. Number of resin and filament printers have been added, uh, which I will list off for you. The Anycubic Photon MF M5S Pro, Creality Hallet Play, Elegoo Saturn 4, Elegoo Saturn 4 Ultra, Piopoli Forge 7K Upgrade, Frozen Sonic Mighty Revo, the Uniformation GK2 12K Upgrade, and that's for resin. Uh, filament, the Artillery Sidewinder X3 Plus Pro, the X4 Plus Pro, Creality Ender 3V3 and Ender 3V3KE, Creality CR10 SE, Elegoo Orange Storm Giga, Two Trees, SK1, Vox Labs, Aquila, Vox Labs, X3, X3 Plus, X3 Max, and S3, as well as some other various filament 3D printers that I did not list. I'm sure the list is just long enough that... If they just didn't list all of them here on the change log. Now, for anyone who's interested, I am going to put a link to the change log, but pretty much everything I read off to you is from the change log information. This is just me kind of reciting this to you guys in an easy to swallow format. Anyway, we're going to get right into demonstrating some of the features of 6.0.2. If you're a pro user, 
These are going to be a lot of really cool new features that you're going to be able to explore. This is going to not only improve your workflow, this is going to make your auto supports and your, and your total supports in general that much stronger and better to work with. All right, without further ado, let's get into the rest of the demonstration. Okay, so as you can see, the Lychee support structure menus have changed a bit once. And if you haven't played around with the beta, you probably haven't seen this yet. But if you have, then you're familiar with the structure tab, which has now been added to the support menu. So when you click on support under prepare, you will now have a structure tab. Structure is going to have the details you need in order to create or recreate supports based on the grid structure. So if I were to take, like, for, for example, one of the features I spoke about was that in the Pro, you're able to take your stuff that's already been supported and you're able to now turn your grid on and then re-update the um, supports in order to encompass this new grid system. And you can see essentially what it does is it adds a bunch of bracings and they're, they're uniquely, you know, created for each preset. And of course, like I said, you can create your own preset, which is down here. You can click on this to create an, another preset of your own. But that's really based on something you've already made. So for example, if you have like a custom style of bracing that you want to create, you can go ahead and do that. And once you're done with that, you go ahead and over to your support bracings, and then you just add the new preset, create a name for it, and it will, um, I mean, here, for example, even though this preset already technically exists, if we were to click this, we go, okay, add new, and we can just say small, strong object just to create a new one. And this will then go ahead and create another. See, and then we can we can look at this here, and this will say, okay, what are the different, you know, we can say double diagonal, mix, simple diagonal, gap. Uh, this is the gap between bracings, uh, bottom start, diameter first, etc., and save and apply. Now, as of right now, I don't want to do this with this, but this is a great way if you are very technical, if you want to work your work, your own custom grid supports into your own workflow, this is the way to do it. This fully allows you to customize this. Now, again, this is a pro feature. So if you're a pro user, this is something you can access. If you're a free user, this is unfortunately not something you can access. Now, what if you were to go ahead and do this for a brand new object? Um, that's a great question. We do, I do want to demonstrate that for you. So we'll go ahead and grab a brand new, we'll grab a fresh unsupported object. So you can see, um, let me go ahead and grab, um, you know, I'll grab that, that, that same arm, the arm with the flashlight. Okay, so there's the arm with the flashlight. And there's the orientation I would probably support that at. So we go ahead and just go over to the prepare tab, grab yourself a raft, then go ahead and over to your support uh, menu, then go over to structure, make sure the grid is on, adjust this however you want, you know, make your own preset, whatever you want there. And then we can say, okay, we're going to go small object. And then we're going to go back over to auto and go ahead and do the generate on the automatic support. And this is going to create not only a grid structure, but you're going to have a nice set of auto supports uh, for your object. Now, to be honest, I have used a lot of auto supports and I have worked with Lychee for a number of years now. Um, this is great. This is a massive improvement over auto supporting in the way it used to work. So if you are a pro version user and you are already using auto supports, highly recommend trying this feature. Not only does the grid support save you um, as far as format, but if you're if you're one of those folks that does auto supporting and then kind of works your way backwards, this is even better because the bracing support structures here are fantastic. If you do come up with your own, if you want to create your own, I think it's even better. And it's just superb. And then if you want to work off the grid, you simply turn it off and the grid structure disappears. So this is a great way to kind of organize your support workflow. If you, you can do this for auto supporting, then you can turn it off and then you can work off the grid to modify and add things to it. Or you can work on the grid and you'll see here where some of the auto parenting um, function take place where the uh, supports will try to join themselves. Now, this is great because a lot of this will save you resin. Less stuff that has to print means less resin that's being used. This is not a bad thing. This is actually a really good thing. And I applaud Lychee 
for thinking of a feature like this that not only will help you strengthen up your supporting, but is also going to save you time and money. I love it. It's fantastic. So the other point that we made was there's another feature for Row that uh, resin that I discussed. That was about mirroring. Now this is more of a this kind of like a minor change in my opinion. What it did there was it allows you to kind of center the world or the object when you go into mirroring mode. So if we were to um, here, let's take a look at this real quick. And we take a look at, now this right here has been turned from its native, its orientation used to be like this. So that would be its native direction that it's facing is like forward like that. So if we were go to mirror and we go to um, manual and then we go to mirror, we can go to X and X is going to put it in a very weird kind of like position like this. Now, if we go to world, we notice that that now changes because the X is now this way. If we go back to objects, we can see the orientation goes back to that weird mirror orientation. Now, if you wanted to put it, you could put it on Y. That would work for the object. But again, you can switch from world to object. And that allows you to kind of get a little bit better use out of your mirroring, I think. Um, this is a nice update for the mirroring function. And for those of you that do use mirroring a lot, like I do, especially when you're doing stuff like bases, this is a great way of getting it done. Um, so yeah, good. There, there's your mirroring function right there. Now, as far as the other features we spoke about, um, there were quite a few printers added to the roster, both on the resin and the filament side. I think more on the filament side than on the resin side. So that's always great. And lots of bug fixes. So if you're interested in downloading the newest version, uh, it should be automatic the next time you open up your application. Uh, you should just be able to download it right there. It should install automatically and you should be good to go. If you are ever curious about downloading and playing around with the beta programs, feel free to check out the Discord. Um, you can download the beta programs anytime you like for pre-released version, uh, pre-release features and stuff like that that haven't come out yet. I highly recommend it if you're someone like me who's really exploring this and trying to get a leg up um, to do the best you can on your support work. Anyway, that's pretty much it for the Lychee update episode. Hope you guys enjoyed. Hope this was informal, inf uh, inform, 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 informative. Jeez, I can't spit that out today. And otherwise, um, we'll see you all again next time. And as always, thanks so much for watching.